I find this subject to be fascinating. I look at a lot of paintings out there and I notice that a lot of artists avoid painting hard shadows. So you see, I use those a lot in especially the murals that I want to have a lot of depth. Well, it's amazing what those hard shadows tell your eyes about without you knowing. You know, you just see these shadows and you, and you notice right away the direction that the light is coming from and it gives you a sense of the time of day and the uh, it, it gives depth to the plane not airplane not as an airplane but you can see that I've got all these planes sitting on a platform before I put those hard shadows in there they looked like they were floating in space that didn't look like a horizontal plane but when I put those hard shadows all of a sudden it takes the shape of a horizontal flat plane but now let's talk about the color of shadows it's really important that you get the color of a, of a hard cast shadow right, well any shadow for that matter. But the way I do that is by adding black uh, is 90% of the time will do it. But you need to consider the light sources. So as I've said in other videos, a shadow is like an alternate light source that's dimmer. So in this case, I have this bluish surface that the planes are sitting on here and I have blue indirect light coming down from the sky. I also have direct light coming from the sun that I want to look like it's coming this way, from this side, across the corner of the room, casting those shadows. So, the, the sun is low in the sky, it's casting an orange glow, and that orange light hits a blue surface, it's gonna wash out the color. So, this is what happens. My shadows are gonna be quite a bit bluer in this case than the bright areas of this platform that the planes are sitting on. Because on the bright areas the blue is coming from one source, the actual color of the platform. On the shadowed areas, the shadows that the planes are casting, it's coming from two sources. It's coming from both the color of the platform itself and the color of the indirect light from the sky hitting it and it's not getting hit by that direct orange glow sunlight. So you see, I have to make these shadows bluer. Now those, I really fine tune those colors. I'm telling you this because the tiny differences in color, your eyes are so perceptive to that and will tell you if a picture looks natural or if it looks unnatural just because of real hairline differences in the color of a shadow. It's just shades of gray in the end, but you're just so perceptive. So watch I'm noticing this plane you see I've got I want the light to look like it's coming from the side I like the way that orange plane is then I come over here and see how the shadow on that stingray looking plane is going more downward and not as much towards that corner so I need to shift that and make that go more directly sideways towards that corner so that it matches that orange plane and this guy over here see that shadow I want that light to look like it's going right across the corner of the room. It's tricky, you know, matching up perspective across a corner where you have two different angles. But if you succeed in doing it, it makes a mural so much better because all of a sudden it makes the shape of the room disappear and you feel like you're in the picture because it breaks the corner of the room. It's not subject to the confines of the shape of the room. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to fix the angle of that shadow. My colors on this are just blue, black, white. That's the colors that I used for this platform right here. So I'm going to start by fixing the angle of this. I'm just going to bring that up and cut it in. So I've already got the blue, black, and white in my brush. But see, I'm going to go white. I add a little bit of blue. Add a little bit of black, probably a little more. I'll just eyeball it, you know, it's, it's too blue, so I'm gonna add black. So, let's do this, add white. For the most part, this is how I work on all my murals. I mix the stuff right on the wall. If you watch my other videos, you can see me doing that. And the trick with working. People ask me a lot what paint I use. This is 
your regular, this is what you would paint a, any wall with inside of a house. Interior, water-based acrylic or latex paint. And it goes on typically lighter when it's wet and dries a little darker, so you have to adjust for that. So if I want to match a color, like you can see here, this looks lighter than the colors around it, but when it dries, it'll darken up. So now that I've got a good amount of the color mixed, I'm just going to cut this in and, and just raise this shadow up. I'm going to leave that jet engine shadow, though, because I like it. There. So the light is coming under the plane like this, and it's catching this jet engine thing that's coming down there, which in reality would never work because I'm sure the aerodynamics are all way off. And, but it's just for kids so that they can imagine. You know, one of the important things of a good painting, I think, is just making it believable rather than actual. You know, who knows if any of this would actually work in a real world, but who cares? If it takes your imagination somewhere that you'd rather be, then you've succeeded in drawing the audience, and that's the purpose of the picture in the first place. Okay, so then uh, I want it to come this way, so yeah, I'm gonna shift the whole thing this way and up. So go this way, chop off the bottom of that. What was I got? I'm gonna step back. People ask me too, how do you know when you're up against the wall? How do you know what shapes to paint? You know, like how do you keep it from getting stir well? I back up and look. <laughs> Another cheater way is just to look at the viewer on the camera. Okay. Yeah, the back up and look method is still the best. <laughs> Keeps your legs in shape too when you're going up and down the ladder. Yeah, see. That's starting to look like it matches the angle of this one better. Oh, I hear people outside. Yeah, so this is down in a, I'm down in North Phoenix area. This is a pediatric office, pediatric dentist office. Jet set smiles. And, uh, it's a really cool place, you know, they're going to have this place decked out with murals. It's going to be really fun for the kiddos. Alright, do that. See, once I've got the paint mixed on there, because it's water based, I can just keep throwing water onto this. And just cover up. I'll worry about really fine-tuning or touching up colors after I get my shapes where I want them. Okay, so I've got that angle adjusted. Okay, now to mix the shadow color, I'll do blue. I gotta have more blue in the shadow. But I'm still gonna have the black and white, just different amounts. Okay. And remember, it's gotta be a little bit lighter than what I want it to ultimately dry to. Turn the black in here. Get some water. Okay, now I'll adjust this angle again. Now when a shadow is cast across like this, because of the changing angle, the shadow is gonna be stretched, just like when you look at a shadow yourself in the evening and it's real long, you know. So I'm going to take this shape of this plane and stretch it out and make the shadow real wide. I need to do that to make it look like that shadow is coming under the plane and over the plane and just coming from the side rather than the top, you know? Like this, round up that nose. A lot of texture on this wall, that's why I'm doing so much working with all this mumbo jumbo right here just really makes my arm tired, but that's why I work it into that texture. Okay. Go here. 